Hello Minions, it's Wheezy. Today, I'm gonna tell you why the Modern Warfare 2 beta was great. Let's go talk about it. All right, so I've decided to start doing a series of these videos, essentially where I'm gonna be talking about different games, what makes some games good, what makes some games bad. A lot of what kind of goes on in talking about gaming on YouTube or playing games in general is evaluating what you like about games, what you don't like about it, why you play one game and not another, why do I like this Call of Duty and not that Call of Duty. So this is kind of my first uh, dive into that, so expect more of these. And I figured I would kind of dip my toe in with not even a full game, a beta. So today I'm going to talk about why I think the Modern Warfare 2 beta was actually great. That doesn't mean I'm going to talk about only good things. I'm going to mention uh, bad things as as well. Um, but my overall impression of the Modern Warfare 2 beta is that it was a great preview of what's coming from Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare 2 in 2022, as I'm going to call it Call of Duty 22 or Modern Warfare 22. <laughs> um, but, but let's just start diving into what I really uh, thought of this beta. So the first thing that I want to talk about that jumps out in my mind immediately with Modern Warfare 22 as well as 19 is the gunplay. The gunplay in Modern Warfare 2's beta absolutely felt great. Um, does that mean it was perfect? No, but as far as guns feeling significant like they did in Modern Warfare 19, um, they just have a good sound to them, they feel significant, they feel like you're really firing a powerful weapon uh, in a way that other Call of Duties in the series don't really capture. Cold War and Vanguard both had very insignificant sounding weapons. When you fired them, they felt like BB guns or airsoft guns. Right out of the gate, as far as enjoying the game and the game feeling just like a guttural sort of feel, I thought Modern Warfare 22 was well on that path. They had more recoil than Modern Warfare 19, which I actually liked, even though it makes the guns harder to control, obviously. Um, and it does make some of the gunfights a little bit more inconsistent, so sometimes you can get what I've always considered in previous Call of Duty games kind of lucky headshots when the gun manages to bounce randomly up and you and the person shooting you gets a lucky headshot that feels like oh and i got kind of lucky but that said especially at medium to longer ranges you're not getting laser beamed to death by assault rifles and smgs like you could in other games um so so i really like that aspect of it i liked how the guns felt i liked how the game played um and i liked just that guttural feel that is that has been modern warfare 22 and modern warfare 19. Another thing I really enjoyed about Modern Warfare 19, that's also in the Modern Warfare 2 beta, is that all of the guns feel viable in their own way. Obviously, some are going to rise to the top, some will become more of the meta guns, but one thing that Modern Warfare 19 I felt did really well was making it so you could grab any weapon and at least have fun playing with it, even if you knew you weren't going to top the leaderboards, but it had a role, it had a place, and it had a way you could play it. In Cold War, in Vanguard, I didn't feel as much like you had that flexibility. If you didn't pick a meta weapon, you just were kind of being left behind and you were every gunfight you were at a disadvantage especially with what felt like really bad connection advantages in both cold war and vanguard and really fast time to kills if you didn't have a really fast low recoil uh, fast time to kill weapon you were just at such a huge disadvantage it made it no fun to play and that's part of why i lost interest in those games um there are other reasons <laughs> do separate videos potentially if i have time and i feel uh feel motivated to go back and talk about the old games in my rearview mirror i may go back and talk about why those games sucked <laughs> um 
But, yeah, in Modern Warfare 22, in Modern Warfare 2, uh, it feels like you can grab the lever action, and you're not going to do as well, necessarily, unless you're an absolute god like some people are. Um, so you won't do as well, necessarily, as you do with something that's a little more forgiving, like the M4, uh, or even the L sub, the Lachman sub, the MP5. Um, so from that standpoint, I like that in that... It's a different play style. If you get good upper neck uh, headshots with like the lever action with MK2, um, you know it can be a, a really satisfying one hit kill. It's more demanding. Um, you either have to play slower or have a higher skill ceiling for that. So I'm, I'm I definitely really like that aspect of it, and that was also something I enjoyed in the beta. Another thing that I really enjoyed about the, what was it, four maps for the core 6v6 modes in the beta was the Infinity Ward map design. My, my favorite Call of Duty maps, most of them, most of my favorite Call of Duty maps from all time have been in Infinity Ward games, COD 4, um, Modern Warfare 2, there's maybe even a couple from Modern Warfare 3 was, was Radar, was that Modern Warfare 3? Um, Infinity Ward does a good job, in general, of designing good three-lane maps. Um, they've had some variation and some altitude over time. Not, um, not as crazy as, like, Favela from Modern Warfare 2. Um, but they do a good job of finding a balance between having a nice level design that looks like a place that might exist in the world, but that you can tell is actually built from the ground up for multiplayer 6v6 shooting games, right? In a way that... Vanguard and Cold War very much felt like they built maps that they thought looked cool or maybe they pulled them straight out of the campaign and they didn't play really well in my opinion in a multiplayer mode because the lines of sight weren't well controlled you had too many areas where you could just get shot from every angle and it makes the game feel random and frustrating and scattered and not focused and tactical uh, in a way that Infinity Ward is actually really good at designing their maps so the four maps in the beta were all new maps, um, which I loved. Um, the only thing that I really didn't like in there was in um, Mercado. There's the two building, the one building with the, the stairway that leads up to the platform. I ran into a few games where people were just camping the shit out of that, placing bouncing, like placing the proximity mines. I was calling bouncing betties. Placing the bouncing betties, sitting up there camping and if you have three or four people in there it's really hard to dig them out i think there's going to be something they're going to have to change about that map because that is such a irritatingly effective technique any team that can actually put three or four people in that building is going to be just a pain in the ass to play it ruins the match um the building on the other side that's more like an actual building where it's got the outside stairwell the inside stairwell that one's less bad. You can camp it pretty hard too uh, and defend it pretty effectively, but not as much as as the, the kind of the warehouse building. So um, beyond that, I felt like I really enjoyed the maps. I thought they played well. I thought they flowed well. Even Mercado, when people aren't just sitting and locking down those maps, uh, locking down those buildings, it also plays really well and flows really well. So uh, definitely looking forward to more Infinity Ward maps, more new maps, as well as I am actually really hoping that they just take the easy route and just pull in. They could pull in all of the Modern Warfare 2 maps if they wanted to. Um, Modern Warfare 2, what is it, 2009? I don't even know. Modern, Modern Warfare 2, 09. Um, but at least the great ones, you know, the ones that, we, that you all think of with Terminal and, and stuff like that. So I, I would be fine with all that. that they want to bring in those Infinity War maps and bring in the COD 4 ones again, right? Bring back Crash again, you know? I, I'm not as huge fan of like shipment and those smaller ones right but the ones that back lot like those cod 4 maps overgrown i would love to see that come back um the engine for modern warfare 22 feels so good that just i want them to bring as many maps as they can into it um and just throw them into the general playlist so that we can play through all of them i think that would be absolutely great um another thing i like about infinity war map design is that kind of parkour element of how you can move through maps uh is neat Primarily because what it does is they actually give you a lot of alternate routes to power positions that don't maybe intuitively 
um, stand out, right? So where you can get to a rooftop by going up a ladder um, or going through a stairwell, which makes sense. That's how most people get there. If someone gets up there and is locking that area down, you've got alternate ways you can get up there too, right? Where maybe in the front of the building, there's some boxes you can jump on or a broken wall that you can hop on to get over there. So it gives you some opportunities to surprise people and help counter those power positions. Again, something notably absent from those two buildings on Mercado that you can lock down. There's not many alternate ways in there. There's a couple of doorways uh, and that's it. Um, but in general, they design the maps very well from that aspect too. Loading fresh mag. Uh, and the last thing I really like about the map designs from Infinity Ward is they do a good job of balancing short and long range engagements. Some maps in general tend more towards long range, some maps in general tend more towards short range, but usually across most of their maps, there's ways to choose routes through the map that give you access to both. Farm is a great example uh, in Modern Warfare 22 in the beta where there's a lot of uh, external lines of sight that can be reasonably long whether it's down the streets um, or if you're on like the A-side in Domination the A-side building or the roof on above the C cap point. Um, they can kind of look across at each other a little bit which I didn't notice until I, I saw a video uh, from one of the other creators on my Twitch looking. So I was like, oh, you can see the A building roof from the C roof. Okay. Um, but there's cool little stuff like that. So, and then in the middle of farm is the shoot house where you can take a shotgun in there and just absolutely dominate that at close range um, if you don't want to use a longer range weapon or, you know, it just changes up that engagement. The way that you would fight for A and C on that map is very different than the way you fight for B, uh, which which I think is really cool. Um, so yeah, overall, I thought the level design, the map design was, was great in the beta. More generally, the graphics and the audio I thought were really good. Now, I know we can get into conversations about, and I'll talk about on the bad side, footstep audio and how the audio in general kind of contributes to the game. Um, but in general, the game looks like just a upgrade of Modern Warfare 19 and a audio upgrade in a, in a slight way too. Like the audio in Modern Warfare 2019 also felt really good. So it feels like just what I was wanting Modern Warfare 22 to be, which is Modern Warfare 19 turned up to 11. So it's looking like uh, that's what we got. And as far as just generally how the game looks and sounds, it's fantastic. Friendly UAV online. Counter UAV ready for tasking. Reloading. The next thing that I want to talk about is Gunsmith 2.0 and the weapon platform system, which I also really enjoyed. I think it's a good change of pace for how weapon progression is going to be added in the game. And as someone who is legit a, a, gun, a gun guy in real life, having the ability to kind of build out guns as a platform instead of like Lego bricks or some sort of like abstract gamified concept um, is really cool. So having like, the, you know, they call it the, the Lachman platform essentially um, in the game where it's the, what is it, the Lachman, I, I just kind of refer to them shorthand as the L, starts with the L762 and you can unlock the L556 on top of that, the L sub, um, on that submachine gun variant, the LMS, which is the Marksman Semi-Auto 762 variant, um, the L556, like the ability to, to take that, what, in a non-licensed, they're, they're avoiding the licensing, right? It's the HK platform, it's the H&K G3 MP5 platform, you know, taking that and being able to just kind of progress along that tree, and then what was the other one they called, the L ramp, L... LRH or something like that, the LMG variant uh, of the H and K platform. Um, I really love that concept of how things are built out. And then again, with the M4 platform, the M4 being 
uh, United States military designation, not a licensed uh, platform name, so they can always just use that. Um, the AR-15 platform fundamentally it starts with the M4, and then you can do the Hurricane, which uses like the P90 magazine and ammunition to do the submachine gun variant. The uh, God jumped out of my head. The Icarus LMG variant. The FTAC marksman rifle variant. Like I absolutely love that concept and also where as you unlock attachments um you know if you unlock this optic for the m4 platform then you have that available across the other so when you unlock the l sub variant or the, the the submachine gun variant of it you can use that optic but there's also optics related to like the marksman classes that are more scopes that you wait till you get into that part of the progression tree to unlock those so I really like just what we saw from the two platforms essentially we had access to in the beta. I really like that system and I'm really looking forward to, to digging into it and, going and seeing all the different platforms that they're going to have in the full game and getting access to those and, and using them. So I think that's going to be uh, really cool. Stun grenade out! So then the next thing is general gameplay. Like how did the game feel um, beyond just specifically the gunplay? And I really enjoyed it. So with a few things that we'll talk about in kind of the, the negative section, overall, most fights in Modern Warfare 2 felt fair. There were some connection advantage -y things and, and here and there, um, a little bit of frustration things that are kind of typical to online games. Um, but the positive thing of it is most of the time in the Modern Warfare 2 beta, if I died, I knew why. And I was able to identify what I did wrong or what someone else did right that caused them to win that fight versus me. So whether it was I just missed my shots and the other player shot better, whether it was I entered an engagement in close range with a long range weapon against someone who had an SMG or a shotgun. You kind of understand how it's going to turn out. You can get lucky. You can sometimes skill stomp on somebody if, if you just have get, get your shots on. Um, but for the most part, I didn't spend much time watching kill cams, which is usually a good sign uh, for me because a kill cam is typically something that I watch when I want to see what bullshit transpired to cause me to die. Um, if I didn't watch the kill cam, Typically, that's an indicator that, okay, I know why I died, I know what happened, and it felt fair. So the things that I ran into that felt like that didn't fall into that category most of the time were connection-y things, like feeling like there was a little bit of getting killed around corners at time. There was a little bit of feeling like there was a peeker's advantage where someone could jump around the corner, and they got a full like quarter of a second uh, or to, to shoot at you before you got to see them on your screen. So it felt like they jumped around the corner and killed you in one bullet, but on their screen, they jumped around the corner, you were kind of standing there pointlessly, and then they aimed, and then they shot six bullets into you, and then that's not what you saw. So there was uh, more of that than I was used to seeing in Modern Warfare 19, but significantly less of that than I was used to seeing in Cold War and Vanguard. So I'm optimistic that that is an issue that will either get better or remain less common than in the last couple of games, or hopefully it'll be something they can resolve um, more effectively. And I think the big deciding factor for that in Modern Warfare 19 versus 22 is I believe the, the kill, the time to kill in Modern Warfare 19 was slightly slower, um, so there was less of that feeling of getting slammed, because even if someone got a small advantage from connection, it didn't feel like they one-shot you. It felt like Maybe they got a lucky headshot and killed you in a couple of bullets instead of just feeling like someone leapt around the corner and you instantly died and you're not sure why. And then more generally, with the gameplay in the Modern Warfare 2 beta, I wanted to keep playing. Like, when I when I got done playing, it was like late at night or something and I had to go or I had to take the kids to sports or do adulting stuff or, or the beta ended. I wanted to play more of the beta, even once I hit level cap, even once I hit level 30 for the second weekend, level 15 for the first weekend, even when I had everything unlocked and there was nothing left to grind, I enjoyed the way the game played enough that I wanted to keep playing. And not just 
because I'm a YouTube creator and I wanted that sweet, sweet content, I just genuinely enjoyed playing the game and wanted to keep playing it. So that's another thing um, that I think is a really big bonus. That is something that that eventually happened with uh, Cold War and Vanguard. Well, very quickly happened with Cold War, Vanguard, and Battlefield 2042. In short order, I just stopped wanting to play the game. Regardless of what I needed to unlock or whatever, or progress, or this, that, or the other. The game just didn't make me want to keep playing. Modern Warfare 2's beta, I absolutely wanted to keep playing. In the same way that Modern Warfare 19 did, in that even today, <laughs> I'm still playing Modern Warfare 19. Because it's, again, as far as I'm concerned, full release games, the best Call of Duty in the series, um, hands down. And I, I, whenever I'm feeling like I want to play a shooter, that one is at the front of my mind. Because for what's available today... Modern Warfare 19, in my mind, is still the best shooter uh, available on the market. Um, and so that's that's kind of how it is. I'm, I want to, in the next couple of days, jump in to try Battlefield 2042's new update. Um, just to see how that's coming along. And because I fucking paid for the Ultimate Edition of that game. And I just keep hoping that I'm going to show up and it's going to be fun. But Modern Warfare 2 doesn't look like I'm going to have that problem. Got the Vault Edition. <laughs> and uh, I'm excited. I'm very excited. Changing bag. Uh, so the last thing that I want to talk about on the positives that I enjoyed is game modes. I felt like the beta did a great job of exposing everyone to the variety of game modes that Modern Warfare 2 is going to have. And they didn't even go all the way, right? So things like Kill Confirmed weren't in there. Um, but the... Like, they started out, you know, TDM and DOM and then Search and Destroy. Their new modes that they're trying out, Hostage Rescue and Knockout, I think is what it was called. Um, they added Hardpoint towards the end. Like, they had the Invasion mode with AI. They had Ground War towards the end of it, too. So, what they showed, even though I didn't necessarily spend a whole lot of time with those other modes, is that they showed what the game's going to have as far as the breadth of content that's going to be available and that it feels like there's going to be something for everyone and even if i'm playing modern warfare 22 and i want to have kind of that battlefield feeling that i can't get from 2042 right now because it's kind of shit um and that a game like battlefield 3 or battlefield 4 that i really enjoyed um because those controls are feeling really dated um i might have that opportunity a little bit in ground war in modern warfare 22 although the kill streak inclusion in that mode kind of fucking sucks in that after a few minutes it feels like you're constantly getting swarmed by harriers and gunships and chopper gunners and stuff like that so we'll see how that actually plays out for me personally the core of call of duty is the 6v6 game modes um and i have my favorites tdm dom uh kill confirmed um if the servers are populated um you know playing games like capture the flag is fun Games like Hardpoint, I don't enjoy um, unless, you know, you're running with a team, which I don't get to very often because um, it's a coordinated game. So if you get thrown into Hardpoint with a bunch of randos against even two or three players on the other team that are working together, you just get stomped. They memorize the rotations. So not a bad game mode, but for playing random drop-in, drop-out game modes, not necessarily my type. SND is another one of those things. Good tactical game mode, but also not really my speed as far as the amount of action. It's very... Um, Instead of being action-oriented, it's very much more defensively kind of camping-oriented. It emphasizes a lot more map knowledge and try-hardy, getting to power positions and stuff like that. Which, great, I got nothing against that for me. Not huge. Could I get great at that? Could I, could I get to the point where I'm really competitive in that? Yes, but spending 20 minutes, 30 minutes to get 10 kills isn't really my, my idea of fun, even if that means that you're really great at that mode. So... I don't expect <laughs> hardly any, if any, search and destroy content for me. If you're a search and destroy uh, try hard lover, cool. Nothing, nothing against you. But um, if you want to see a lot of a lot of action, if you want to see kill streaks, you want to see uh, awesome plays and action hero bullshit. That's what that's what the wheezy <laughs> shows up for. Um, I want to go in guns blazing, be tactical. I want to play smart um, and and have that immersion of a modern military shooter 
Um, but without being a full milsim and with it being, you know, exciting, I think that's, for me, that's where Call of Duty really, really hits home. So finally, let's talk about some of the not so great things about the Modern Warfare 2 beta. Um, I mentioned our briefly before, connection advantage, peekers advantage, hopefully um, there's not a ton of that as far as how prevalent it is. I think honestly, and I'll touch, touch on this again here in just a minute, I think a lot of that is also tied to the way they've implemented their skill-based matchmaking, i.e. the way that they disband lobbies. You can get in a lobby with people where you have a good solid connection and everyone in there has low ping and it would be a great experience. But because you get disbanded after every game and it's constantly switching you to other lobbies, it can be very inconsistent. You can have an absolutely great connection one match and then the next match it's absolute horseshit and you feel like you're getting killed around every corner and then the next match you're back on top like you can. So that is something that's not great. I, anyway, um, the new perk system, honestly, I don't see the advantage of it. I think they're, they're making that change for the sake of making a change. I don't think having four perks that are time blocked is adding anything to the game that you didn't get with three perks um, that were balanced across the categories, like you weren't able to stack two perks that were too powerful together because they were in the same category. So I don't think that's an addition that really adds much to the game, especially when you talk about Ghost being uh, the later unlock and how prevalent UAVs are um, being a four kill streak. Um, in, and having something like Quick Fix as a as something you don't have out of the gate. The biggest problem I have with the perk system time gating some of your perks is that it makes the experience a little inconsistent. When you start out the match, you have fewer perks and then they appear. The game does a pretty decent job of popping up and showing you, hey, you have this perk now, but it doesn't feel necessarily like something you really did anything to earn. It just feels like the game is like handing you out some additional perks and saying, okay, well now you can have this perk. Oh, now you can have a, a, a better perk. And I don't see where it contributes to the game. I don't see why having everyone for like eight minutes of the game constantly available on UAV, I don't see where that adds to the game. I think the people who have to make the balance between choosing whether or not they want to not show up on radar, or maybe they have one fewer kill to earn their kill streak, you know, that that kind of give and take, that balance of choosing the perk that suits your play style. Maybe you're someone who's gonna go around with an unsuppressed weapon and rush a lot, so a ghost doesn't mean anything to you, right? Also, with them changing the radar to where unsuppressed weapons don't make you show up on the radar, they show up on the compass, I think, which nobody, nobody, you, nobody looks at the fucking compass, right? You, you're, you do a better job of hearing gunshots in the game than showing up on the goddamn compass, right? So anything that's not on the minimap might as well not even be there. So UAVs make it so that you're constantly on there, and even if you have an unsuppressed weapon, it doesn't throw you on the map. So the the logic I heard for that is that. Infinity Ward doesn't want to punish you for firing your weapon, right? So they don't want to just throw you on the minimap because you're shooting, even though the balance of that was always choosing a suppressor. If you don't want to be exposed for shooting, right, you use a suppressor. I always think of the minimap in Call of Duty games as an augmentation of what you would experience in real life that you don't get to in video games, right? So if you have a good set of headphones, yeah, you can directionally place where people are shooting. But the amount of sensory information available to you via a video game screen with a limited field of view and what you get through your headphones is less than you would get in the real world. So things like a mini-map are a way of augmenting what you would kind of experience with more of your senses in real life. So if you hear gunshots, in, in reality, you would mentally be able to kind of place where those are in a way that's more difficult in a video game. So the minimap kind of, to me, always represented that cognitive understanding of where things are. In the same way that it shows you where your teammates are, even through walls and, and on the minimap. Because in real life, if there were radio comms or something like that, or you just having awareness of where the, your team is, that's kind of represented in a way that doesn't require them to get on the comms and be like, I'm moving to the right, I'm over in quadrant six. like. You just, you, you make that an assumed part of the game. You just kind of keep track of where your teammates are. So from that standpoint, I don't ever think it was really a punishment in the first place. It was a way of just like that trade-off of suppressed versus unsuppressed. And then you add that with the footsteps. 
where footstep audio makes it so that it's very easy to track people by audio, which I like. I I think it needs to be toned down a little bit because you can hear footsteps a little too well, so people can hear you from three blocks away coming and pre-aim you. Um, so from that standpoint, I think it's a little too powerful, but I like being able to hear where footsteps are coming from. That's immersive. But the idea that you don't show up on the minimap because they felt like firing your weapon and showing up on the minimap would be making it so that you're punished for firing your weapon. Footstep audio, the way it is right now, means that you're punished for walking around the map. They don't want to punish you for firing your weapon, but they do want to punish you for moving. I don't think that's a very good design philosophy, and they need to rethink that. And I think it's a combination of those two, right? Let Tone the footsteps down a little bit, but leave them so that you can track people by footsteps. Then also make them appear on the minimap if they shoot an unsuppressed weapon, so that if someone wants to be sneaky... They have to use dead silence, they have to put a suppressor on their weapon, and they have to move carefully so that they don't make themselves aware. For everybody else, let me know where the fuck you are, right? Having the ability to have a completely unsuppressed weapon and run around the map shooting and and if you don't show up on the radar, whereas I show up for you on the radar, even if I'm not shooting at all or I have a suppressed weapon and the UAV goes over because I haven't unlocked Ghost yet because it hasn't been eight minutes, then you can fucking track me down in an instant, but... Me knowing where you are because you're firing your weapon, that's, that doesn't make any sense to me. I think there's something that needs to be, be fixed um, from there. Um, I already mentioned uh, the issue with um, the Mercado map where there's a little bit too many campy spots. I think that also contributes to the thing, the, the way that kind of perks are set up and the way that the audio is and the UAVs and stuff like that. It feels like there's a lot of support and motivation for people who play a more campy play style, which is frustrating and I don't think it makes the game very fun. People who want to play reserved and defensively and do a camping playstyle, yes, give them tools, give them claymores and bouncing betties and stuff. Give them the ability to do that and have that playstyle. And tactically, there are times and that makes sense in objective game modes. Sometimes it's a really good idea to play defensively. Um, so, you know, like if you got a two cap in domination and rather than trying to constantly cycle the map and capture that third point and just have spawns flip over and over, maybe you defend your two points. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not opposed to defensive play. That's got its, it's got its place. But making it so the game is actively trying to discourage you from walking around because it's just going to get you killed, and it's, and it's allowing you to use an unsuppressed weapon without anyone seeing where you are on the radar... I don't. I think that's a. I think that's a bad combination that that needs to be massaged and tweaked. But the good thing is, it's not con fundamentally built into the core of the gameplay, so it is something they can adjust and tweak. So I'm optimistic that they'll take feedback and that'll get better over time. Probably won't ever get perfect, um, but should get better. Um, and then the last piece I want to talk about, and I am actually going to do a completely separate video on this, is an understanding of how skill-based matchmaking is actually used in modern games. Like I, I've said this before, I said it in my Twitch stream, uh, and I've said it in one, in my other beta video. Skill-based matchmaking, specifically disbanding lobbies, is not used to keep you matched against people of your skill level. It is used to manipulate whether or not you lose or win games consecutively. There was studies done a few years ago by, I think it was by EA or someone hired by EA. Essentially what they found was that a particular win-loss cadence keeps players more engaged. If you win 10 games in a row, you get bored, the game's too easy. If you lin lose 10 games in a row, you, you get frustrated because you can't win. So what they found was the most the people who stayed the engaged, engaged the longest in games would like win, win, lose, win, lose, win, 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 lose, lose, win, lose, right? Have this cadence of wins and losses. And the problem is they misunderstood the psychology of gamers and instead what they saw was if we can manipulate this win-loss pattern we can keep people engaged. Battlefield 2042, Cold War, Vanguard, they all did this shit and I stopped playing those games not because of not because of the win-loss cadence but even the games when I won I fucking hated the gameplay. <laughs> right? It doesn't work that way, right? In Modern Warfare 2019 it also did the same thing I didn't care about my wins and losses. I enjoyed playing those matches. If I played well and lost because my team was full of a bunch of freaking retards, then that was, okay, that sucks because the skill-based matchmaking has ruined it. But basically what it means is your win-loss doesn't mean shit anymore. No matter what you do, your win-loss in Call of Duty is probably going to be just over 1. Like 1.1, 1 1.2. 1 
The game is trying to keep you there. So no matter what you do, if you're fucking great, if you're the best COD player in the history of the world, it's going to put you with no brain morons every third or fourth game to feed you losses. It's just going to happen that way. Unless you're playing exclusively with like a either, you know, a significantly sized party to where your party can keep you winning because no matter what they do, you can keep winning, right? Because it can't put losers on your team if your squad is full of good players, right? So short of that, if, especially if you're just playing solo, then you're just gonna get fed wins and losses by the game. And I think that takes so much away from the game. I think it's frustrating. I think it, and like I said, I think it contributes to other issues. I think it contributes to the inconsistent connections because since it's constantly dumping you into different lobbies with different people to try and feed you wins and losses, I think it also dumps you into games where you get bad connections, just incidentally, versus finding 12 fucking people who can connect to each other well, who are of reasonably equal skill level, and just letting them play until they get bored and quit, right? And if someone leaves, you drop in someone else of similar skill. That's how Call of Duty used to work when everybody loved it, when you would have rivalries in lobbies, when you would play against the same team three or four games in a row, you'd win, they'd win. That was also skill-based matchmaking, right? There was skill... It calculated in that. It didn't place you as a super 3KD player into a lobby with people who just turned the game on for the first time. You know, it just didn't do that because it knew that that would ruin the experience for everyone. But it let the lobbies just kind of play things out. They changed that after those fucking studies came out and said you can increase player retention by establishing a specific win-loss pattern. And since then, these fucking greedy-ass corporations for their microtransactions have been manipulating wins and losses. I'll get off my soapbox. I'm gonna do a separate video just on that. But anyway, that shit needs to end across the entire industry. Okay, that's my thoughts on the beta. I thought it was great. I, I know I talked a lot about the negatives at the end there, and part of being so passionate about the things that need to be fixed is that the game feels so solid. It feels like they've got a few tweaks to make, and it's gonna be a fucking banger. Um, versus other games where it's like, this is such a fucking mess, why even bother? Let me know what you guys thought of the beta. Let me know if you're excited for the full game. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did enjoy, give me a thumbs up. If you did not enjoy a wheezy rambling video, give me a thumbs down. Uh, subscribe for more awesome content. And I'm going to do all kinds of shit. You just, just subscribe. Did you subscribe yet? You're already subscribed. Thank you, Minion. You're not subscribed yet? Become a Minion. That's enough. I'm done. Goodbye. <laughs>